My name is Dr. Mukwege. I returned back to Congo and I discovered something that was terrible. Chaque femme est violée. Je l'identifie à ma femme. Chaque mère violée, je l'identifie à ma mère. Et chaque enfant violé, je l'identifie à mes enfants. Comment pouvons-nous nous taire About what is happening to women, we have the responsibility to draw the line. Despite being one of the richest countries in natural resources of the world, among which the second largest rainforest, the DRC is still very dependent on imports in terms of sustenance. Violence. So it was the first time for me to see these horrible things. What is happening here? I was not really expecting to do this kind of... Nicknames inherited after a life spent. Join us in Dr. Mukwege's remarkable story. Without peace, there will be no economic and social recovery, no human development, no rule of law, no justice. This is the right time for Tree of Peace, Tree of Life, to restore our nation. Could the man who heals women heal his country too? Today we delve into the life and political ambitions of Dr. Dennis Mukwege. Born in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Dr. Mukwege's story is one of service, resilience, and an unyielding commitment to human rights. From his early life, he was exposed to the plight of women in his country, witnessing his father, a pastor, pray for the sick who had no access to medical care. This sparked a lifelong dedication to medicine and the pursuit of health and dignity for all. His journey into medicine was not without challenges. He had to overcome financial barriers and the turbulent political climate of his country. Yet he persevered, driven by his passion to serve. After medical school, Dr. Mukwege specialized in gynecology and obstetrics, a choice influenced by his deep desire to improve the lives of women in his country. His dedication to serving women led to a focus on victims of wartime sexual violence. He saw the devastating effects of rape used as a weapon of war and decided to act. Dr. Mukwege's work in this field has been nothing short of transformative, earning him international recognition and the Nobel Peace Prize. His tireless efforts to restore the physical and emotional well-being of these women have earned him the moniker, the man who repairs women. But Dr. Mukwege's ambitions extend beyond medicine. He sees a Democratic Republic of Congo where peace, justice and prosperity are not just dreams but realities. A country where the vices of war, hunger and inequality have no place. His vision has led him to politics, where he believes he can affect the most change. As he prepares to run for presidency in the upcoming elections, the entire world is watching. His political program, a reflection of his humanitarian spirit, centers around a global peace plan, aptly named the Tree of Peace, Tree of Life. It's a comprehensive project aimed at reforming the defense and security systems of the national territory, improving conditions of service, and ensuring the well-being of all Congolese. With such an impressive medical career, Dr. Mukwege now sets his sights on politics. With a heart for service and a vision of peace and prosperity, the man who has dedicated his life to healing women now hopes to heal his nation. Dr. Mukwege's political vision is as broad as it is ambitious. A global peace plan at the heart of his platform, Dr. Mukwege introduces the idea of a tree of peace, tree of life. A metaphor for his aspirations, the tree of peace marks the end of wars and vices, while the tree of life signifies the flourishing of his nation, free from hunger and despair. This vision is underpinned by a comprehensive reform of the defense and security systems across the national territory, aiming for a stable and secure Congo. But the vision doesn't stop there. Dr. Mukwege further presents a 12-pillar project of society, a blueprint for new Republican civilizations. These pillars encompass a wide spectrum from health, social, economic, judicial and legal to energy, cultural, environmental and tourist sectors, ensuring a holistic development of the nation. A special focus is also given to free movement, journalists and journalism, diplomatic, ethical and emotional security. 
A notable emphasis of Dr. Mukwege's program is the improvement of service conditions for those who serve the nation, the soldiers and police officers. By increasing their salaries, the plan seeks to enhance their professional performance and ethical behavior, thereby strengthening the pillars of the army and police. Dr. Mukwege's political program is not just about reform, but also about nurturing the seeds of innovation. He pays attention to the national educational and training system, extending it to higher and technical education, practical professional apprenticeships, and scientific research. He even envisages a national organization for creativity and innovation, fostering a culture of ingenuity and progress. In essence, Dr. Mukwege's political program is a journey towards ensuring Congolese living well together. It is a reflection of his life's work, a dedication to serving his country and its people, especially women who have been victims of wartime sexual violence. With these plans, Dr. Mukwege aims to revolutionize the Congolese mentality and create a new future for the country. He is not just the man who repairs women, he is the man with a vision to repair his nation. Believing in the transformative power of education, Dr. Mukwege has a comprehensive plan for the national educational system. His vision is not one of short-term fixes, but of a long-term investment in the minds and hearts of the Congolese people. Dr. Mukwege's philosophy is rooted in the belief that education is the cornerstone of a thriving society. It's not just about reading and writing, but nurturing critical thinkers, inquisitive minds and compassionate individuals. His plan extends to higher and technical education, recognizing the importance of equipping the youth with the skills and knowledge they need to navigate the world of tomorrow. He envisions a system where technical and vocational education is not a side note, but a core component of the curriculum. He believes in the power of practical professional apprenticeships and creating opportunities for students to learn by doing, to gain real-world experience, and to build networks that will serve them throughout their careers. But Dr. Mukwege's plan goes beyond just the conventional classroom. He also has a strong focus on scientific research, understanding that in the face of global challenges such as climate change, pandemics, and technological disruption, investment in research and development is critical. He sees a future where Congolese scientists and researchers are at the forefront of global innovation, contributing to the advancement of humanity. But how does one foster an environment conducive to such innovation? Dr. Mukwege has an answer for that too. He proposes the establishment of the National Organization for Creativity and Innovation. This organization will serve as a platform for nurturing innovative ideas, fostering cross-disciplinary collaboration, and providing the necessary support to turn these ideas into reality. In essence, Dr. Mukwege's educational agenda is a blueprint for a future where every Congolese child has access to quality education, where young adults are equipped with the skills they need to thrive, and where innovation is not just encouraged, but celebrated. Dr. Mukwege sees education as a catalyst for the change he hopes to bring about. Dr. Mukwege has a clear vision of how to tackle the country's most pressing issues. His approach to addressing the Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, is both comprehensive and ambitious. These 17 interconnected goals, set by the United Nations in 2015, are a blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet. At the heart of Dr. Mukwege's plan is the eradication of poverty. He recognizes that poverty is more than just a lack of income. It's a denial of basic rights and opportunities. His strategy involves investing in education, healthcare and job creation, particularly in rural areas where poverty is most acute. Next is the battle against hunger. Dr. Mukwege plans to improve agricultural productivity and support small-scale farmers. His strategy includes promoting sustainable farming practices, improving access to markets, and investing in agricultural research and development. Gender inequality is another area where Dr. Mukwege is determined to make a difference. He believes that empowering women and girls is not only a matter of human rights, but also a necessary foundation for a peaceful, prosperous and sustainable society. His approach includes promoting gender equality in education, health and political representation. On the issue of clean water and sanitation, Dr. Mukwege is committed to ensuring universal and equitable access. He plans to invest in infrastructure, support community-led initiatives and promote hygiene education. He understands that access to clean water and sanitation is a fundamental human right and crucial for public health. Dr. Mukwege's vision extends beyond these four SDGs. 
His comprehensive approach addresses all 17 goals, including quality education, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, reduced inequalities, peace, justice, and strong institutions. Dr. McWaga believes that these goals, when implemented effectively, will ensure a better life for all Congolese. His approach is not just about meeting targets or ticking off boxes. It's about creating a society where everyone has the opportunity to live a life of dignity, prosperity, and peace. Dr. Mukwega believes that these goals will ensure a better life for all Congolese. The question on everyone's mind is, can Dr. Mukwega, the man who has healed so many women, heal his country too? Dr. Dennis Mukwega, a beacon of hope and resilience, is renowned for his medical expertise and humanitarian efforts. Yet the leap from the operating room to the political arena is a significant one, and there are valid concerns among the Congolese populace. Can a man of medicine, however noble his intentions, effectively govern a nation beset by complex challenges? Dr. Mukwega has an ambitious plan for the Democratic Republic of Congo, envisioning a peaceful, prosperous country where all citizens live harmoniously. His proposal, the Tree of Peace, Tree of Life, seeks to end war, hunger, and societal vices. His 12-pillar project aims to transform every aspect of Congolese life, from health and social conditions, to economic stability and ethical standards. However, implementing these plans in a country with deeply rooted issues is a daunting task. The DRC has long grappled with corruption, political instability, and social unrest. Can Dr. Mukwege, with his background in medicine and human rights activism, navigate this intricate political landscape? Moreover, his proposed reforms in defense and security, education and social services require considerable resources. The question arises, where will these resources come from? The DRC is a country rich in natural resources, yet its people remain among the world's poorest. Will Dr. Mukwege be able to redirect these resources towards his ambitious projects? And can he do it without exacerbating existing socio-economic inequalities? Despite these concerns, one thing is certain. Dr. Mukwege's commitment to his country is unwavering. His life's work has been dedicated to serving the women of the Congo, and he now seeks to extend that service to all Congolese citizens. The skepticism is understandable. Yet, in the face of such skepticism, Dr. Mukwege's resolve remains firm. His belief in a better future for the Congo is unwavering. His dedication to his people is unquestionable. As Dr. Mukwege steps into the political arena, the world watches to see if this man of medicine can indeed heal his country.